I'm going to begin just by asking yeah, where the idea for Monsoon first sort of came from for you. Yeah, it's, it's a film, I guess it's an idea that I've had for a long time actually. It's been, uh, I think I've had it even before Lilting, I would say. And it's something, um, because I, the themes in it, the, 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 that sense for uh, a, an identity or sense of cultural or national identity is something that really, that I, I guess I've always struggled or been frustrated by. And uh, so I've, I've always wanted to try to find a way to put that into a film. Uh, and yeah, and I guess it, it eventually became Monsoon. Because I mean, obviously, I, I'm, I gather there are sort of parts of this that are semi autobiographical for you, but would you say all films are to some extent? Do you think that every film, well, particularly for you, do you think that when you make movies, you're, there's always going to be parts of you in the film? Is that kind of inevitable? Interesting. Um, I mean, Monsoon is definitely, I mean, I wouldn't say Monsoon is autobiographical autobiographical but it is personal and I think there are you I mean you're right there are elements in that that are from my own experience as well so but it uh, but yeah the difference is that I I guess I'm not Vietnamese um, but I even though I grew up there and those are my memories um, but yeah I don't, I don't know I mean I'm, I'm writing this I'm adapting this new play this German play into a film at the moment and I'm I, is it personal if I've yeah, I guess I think I think some of the most interesting writing, or work of art, or f films even, or, uh, when it comes from a personal place, it hopefully it, it should resonate a bit oh. more. I found one of the things that I sort of loved about this was that kind of notion of sort of half-remembered childhood memories, you know, that kind of almost hazy memories. Uh, do, you, and do you remember much of your time as Cambodia in the first year? Do you remember much of your time there? Because how old were you when you? When yeah, I left Cambodia when I was a baby, so I really have no memories of Cambodia, and it's a very um, and when I returned there it, again, it was I, I had no I had no way of accessing that. But all my so all my memories, childhood memories are of Vietnam. So uh, in the early like in the early drafts, it was you know it was a, Viet, a Cambodian character rather than Vietnamese, and it, it got so convoluted and complicated. So I decided to, to simplify that and make him a British Vietnamese guy, and then kind of and then I would then I guess used my those memories that those little memories I have left of Vietnam and kind of find, you know, and then f try to shape that into a, f a, 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 a film for Kit. Because I, also I like the, the notion of duality is kind of explore, explored. And I think, I mean, I've seen films recently, The Last Tree uh, and The Farewell, or other films that kind of explore the idea of people that have uh, are sort of caught somewhere between where they grew up and where their kind of family heritage is from. Do you, is this a coincidence, do you think, that we're seeing that these films all have come out quite close together? Or is this actually sort of reflective of, of a theme that is becoming more prevalent in, in modern society, something we're sort of looking into more perhaps, something that is more on our, on our mind, looking into where, where our roots are from and, and where our family comes from? I mean, I, I don't think it's a new thing. I think uh, films about identity have, have been around for a long, long time. I think maybe it, what's interesting is it, is it seems this year or maybe in the last two years, you're getting uh, 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 these type of films that are being made or being financed so they could be then be seen by the public. It's, it's, it's interesting. I think it's especially in, in this political time as well, right? It's quite, in, it's quite interesting. I don't know. But I think certainly it's, it's definitely not... Um, I don't think this, this I mean, it, I, I, I heard a really interesting Radio 4 interview with oh, Anish Kapoor, and he said it was a really interesting thing. A lot of, uh, in Britain anyway, a lot of artists that come from an ethnic background is something that we, a lot of artists talk about. And I think Anish Kapoor is probably one of a few, a handful of artists who doesn't do that, talk about his cultural past or, or cultural identity in that sense. And uh, a quick word on, on Henry, I mean, he's, so he's, he's got real screen presence, doesn't he? I mean, he, he's a real sort of leading man in cinema. You must have been absolutely thrilled to get him on board. And was he someone that was always in your mind right from the offset? No, he wasn't, to be honest. I, I, didn't, uh, I, didn't, know, I didn't know who he was. <laughs> I mean, it's, when, we ca when we eventually cast Henry, he, we, we, we didn't, you know, I didn't know he was going to be this superstar and big Hollywood star. We, we knew he was in this film called Crazy Rich Asian and A Simple Favour. And his agent was telling us, like, oh, my God, you know, these films are going to pop. And we didn't know what they were. And um, we, we genuinely just cast Henry because he was the best person for that. And, uh, and like you said, it, it, the film is a very quiet film. And, um, and, uh, and you know, he's, he's digging something that's very internal. So it needed a character that could convey those nuance. Because I've seen his name linked with the Bond role. Do you, do you think he'd make a good James Bond? 
<laughs> he, he wears a suit very well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah definitely looks better in a suit than I do. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so when you were when speaking to him, was it? I'm interested to know how you sort of how he accessed the kind of emotional side of the character because you mentioned obviously that there were there was a personal story to you. But you kind of uh, when you were giving him directions, were you so often um, looking into how you might have felt in the situations, or was it very much the character on the page? Or was it quite helpful to actually think about your, yourself in the role to, to help when giving him sort of di directions? Um, no, when, when we were actually shooting the film, I, I, I don't think I was thinking about me anymore. I think it was very much about the character and because you, you spent, you know, so many years writing this and prepping for it that you, you, I, I, it was always about the tone that I wanted and how that should come across. And, um, and we spent a lot of time talking about that in rehearsal as well, me and Henry. And, uh, and also Henry, you know, Henry has that duality as well, and he, he was able to access uh, some of his personal feelings towards that. I remember he wasn't the only one who's great in this. I mean, Parker's fantastic. I mean, I first saw him, I think he played Obama in that. Sort of, uh, it's it's Southside, yeah. Yeah, and he was great in that. Uh, again, it must have been great, because I'm talking about the casting in that role, because was, was it always looking for an American? Was that the idea behind the character? Yeah, it was, it was always American because, because of the, 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 the subtext of the American Vietnam War. So, um, and in early drafts, I think um, um, the, the character of Lewis was a, a, a white American, and then along the way it became an African American. Because I mean, I loved the little thing. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. And I wasn't the only one as well. Did, did it make getting this project off the ground easy? But just if you can recall the kind of from the conception of Lilting and the conception of uh, Monsoon, just and, ha and the whole process in getting these gr these projects greenlit was what was the, what are the differences? How different is it when you've had a, a critically acclaimed sort of debut feature? What what does that mean for making a second film? Did you find the whole process sort of more easier to do, or was it still quite challenging? Oh no, fucking agony. <laughs> it was so, it's, I mean, it's interesting sitting here and thinking, oh, you know, it's, it's really nice to have made another one, right? But when you're in the actual, in the everyday of it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't feel easy. You, you know, you submit an application and you're sitting there waiting and you're agonizing over it. And then, you know, during the writing, even though you get, uh, once we got the, the funding to develop the writing, it, it, you know, the, the making of it was another stage later. So. And once you finish the script, you, you, you don't quite know whether you will get funding to make it. And so there's, there are so many uh, obstacles along the way that, that you don't ever quite feel secure that you, you have another film ready, if you see what I mean. And I mean, and obviously, as Henry was in Crazy Rich Asians, which is, couldn't be more different from your project. But do you, can you see there being a potential? Because it was such a huge success in the, on the in the box office that a ripple effect in, in giving sort of um, studios and producers sort of more assurances that you don't have to have um, white Americans in your films to get to get to make money to get bums on seats. I mean, Crazy Rich Asians. Do you think it could hopefully open up the door to allow more stories looking at the um, Asian American experience or the Asian British experience to to be um, greenlit in the future? It's interesting. I, I, was, I read a report that said uh, part of the reason there hasn't been another studio funding of just kind of a, full, uh, a fully East Asian cast was because they felt um, there wasn't enough kind of East Asian or Asian American to go and see it. And they were looking at the statistics of Crazy Rich Asian, the box office figures, right? And it turns out that it was because it was so big, it, it wasn't just appealing to the Asian community, it was far and wide. Um, and I, I think because of that, I think Crazy Rich Asian really has opened the door. And I think you can see a, a lot of films now being made and even like superhero characters are now have, have East Asian cast in them. You know, there was that famous incident with Mulan that they were going to cast somebody that wasn't Asian. And then there was a massive uh, protest about that. And now they have a, a, a Chinese American who's playing Mulan. So I think it's changing. I mean, how f quick and fast? Let's see, I guess. And how was it shooting uh, in Vietnam? Because um, I've been, to, I've, only, I've been to, I haven't been to Vietnam. I've been to, to Malaysia, but my, my wife has been to Vietnam, and it sounds like the streets, particularly like Hanoi and places like that, are just kind of hectic. You know, it's kind of scoot, scooters everywhere, and it's, yeah. there's a real buzz about it. I was wondering how that might have affected the kind of the logistics of shooting a movie. Um, uh, it was insane. It genuinely, it was mental. It was insane. It was just uh, you're pummeled all the time. I think, um, and because again. Uh, we don't have a big budget, so we couldn't close any of the streets down and control those elements. So we, we literally threw our actors in, into the elements. And uh, I think it really gave the film a really, uh, it gave it a real, I think, a more authenticity. And I think it made our film look a lot more expensive than it actually is. 
And how is it crossing the road? It sounds like you just got to go. Yeah, you just you, got, you, you just got yeah, to walk. You, you do. It, is, it genuinely is like that. I know it sounds a bit insane, but um, and oddly, they don't. They just swerve or stop. And um, yeah, I don't think they really observe the traffic lights. That sounds terrifying. Uh, so what's? I mean, you sort of touched upon what's next for you. If you could just go into a bit more detail, it's a German adaptation of a German play. You were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a it's a German play called The Ugly One, and uh, we're um, turning that into a film. Yeah. Yeah, so have, have, has that? What sort of stage is that at the moment? Is it? Have you got into the casting stage? No, no, it's right draft one point five at oh, the moment. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Cool. Well, thanks so much for your time today. Much no, appreciate it. Cheers, Thank you. Song. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys.